Happy Valentine's Day! Here's a heartfelt story about a man, his wife, and the evil succubus that disguises herself as a cat. Serpent's Lair is a 1995 erotic horror movie from director Jeffrey Rayner. The movie begins in this fancy apartment complex. Uh-oh, somebody's been reading Andre Toulon's diary again. Inside the apartment, uh, is this a satanic ritual? Hey guy, what are you doing with that dagger? Ah, he's gonna stab himself in the junk! That certainly is a memorable opening. We cut to the office of Tom Bennett. He's a businessman who's on the phone doing business. And can I get you two tickets to Sunday's game? No. I didn't think so. He's one of those 80s power brokers who lives on a steady diet of red meat, caffeine, and cocaine. His buddy Mario comes in to tell him about this new property that isn't on the market yet. Tom's looking for a new place, so Mario takes him and his wife Alex to check it out. It, of course, is the apartment where that guy killed himself. Why does it smell like burnt flesh in here? Oh look! Tom's wife is one of the models, Inc! This is an apartment! This place is the size of a city block. They finally find the death room. What's this, like two days later? They didn't even attempt to clean this up. I think the police tape's still here. So they removed the furniture, but left the curtain rod. Mario doesn't seem too phased. Don't worry about that, Dakota panel. take care of it. Ah uh, yeah, maybe an explanation is in order. Ah, uh, Lisa said the former owner decided to call it quits. Seems he went with Gaga and decided to cut the family jewels off. Despite the fact that this is an obvious death house, Tom and Alex buy it and move in. Alex is having breakfast and dealing with a demon in her house. Her mother! I don't know why you let a sister store as things in that bedroom upstairs. The stuff stinks. And this countertop, ugh. Tom's reading the paper and... Kitty! He immediately bonds with the cat and wants to adopt her. Alex's mom presents a counter-argument to keep in the cat. I don't think you should do that. You have to feed them every day and then clean that litter box. Oh, God, you have to feed it and clean up after it? Ah, so much work. Isn't that exactly what you do with a baby? The cat doesn't like Alex, though. Someone's at the door. It's their neighbor, Sam. He immediately starts to schmooze on the mother-in-law. That night, Tom is having naughty dreams. The next day, Alex tries to say hi to another neighbor, but he gives her the stink eye. She tells Tom she got the cat without a name, a litter box. The cat repays her by pooping on her shoe. Well, maybe next time you'll actually put litter in the litter box. Later that night, more sexy dreams. Alex wakes up to see the cat left her a dead rat. Good kitty! You reward the cat when they do that. The next day, Alex is mad. Well, I'm allergic to bloody rats on my pillow. I'm telling you, that cat did it purposely. It's got some kind of agenda. The next day, Tom and Mario are talking about their sex lives. Is the sex good? It's great. Uh, I do not know how you do it. Well, you see, the man takes his penis, and Alex is homesick, and the cat is being a cat. You are psycho. Look, lady, I can show you a million videos of cats doing this exact same thing. I love cats, but make no mistake. They can be jerks. Alex chases the cat, who trips her down the stairs, and she gets ketchup on her lip. Tom goes to see her in the hospital. Dr. Sam tells her she'll be fine, just a concussion and a sprained wrist. Even still, the hospital wants to keep her for observation. Wow, they clearly have the rich people healthcare plan. Wait, should she be sleeping if she has a concussion? Later that day, Tom is home alone. Someone's at the door, and holy moly! <laughs> this is the former owner's sister, Lilith. She's a model who flew in from Paris and is there to pick up her brother's stuff that he left behind. She asks if she can go freshen up. She's taken a while, so Tom goes to check on her and she's in the shower? I thought freshen up meant like brush her teeth and take a crap and whatnot. What the hell is this art? Uh, yeah, I want a giant wooden thing with uh, the alphabet on it. He offers her a cup of coffee, which she dumps out and refills with cream. Tom goes to see Alex in the hospital again. She asked him to get rid of the cat, so he's trying to find her a home. He then goes to see Sam, who's talking to Lilith. Turns out she's staying at Tom's while she's going through her brother's things. They relax with some wine, and she gives him sexy eyes while asking the tough questions. Do you love your wife? Hamina, 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 Ed Norton! Hey, what's the best time to go to the dentist? It's, uh... They turn in for the night, and Lilith sets it up so he accidentally sees her undressing.
Tom then goes to his bedroom to punch himself repeatedly in the groin. Outside his window, the cats are amassing. Where's Clovis? Wait, he's staying in the room where the guy killed himself. And they didn't even try to repaint. Ah, just put the mirror over the bloody writing. It'll be fine. The next day, the weird neighbor comes over to tell Tom he's mad about all the cat noise. This makes Lilith angry. Tom goes to see Alex. Champagne in the hospital? This is definitely rich people insurance. Tom goes home and finds the weird neighbor dead. It's like your neighbor had a heart attack. Oh, yes. Heart attack. He goes to the apartment and Lilith made him dinner. Yes, clearly dressed like someone who's been working over a hot stove. I'm just going to let this line speak for itself. You eat fish when it's ready to be eaten. And this fish is ready. They have a lovely dinner. She then pours on the horny. Tom's trying to hide his shame boner. Lilith is tired of being subtle. Well, not that she was being even remotely subtle. Anyway, she decides to make her intentions crystal clear. And I just want to fuck you. Oh, you want to be my lawyer? He tries to fight her off, but she's very persuasive. The doorbell rings and Tom uses it as a way out. He was literally saved by the bell. Oh no, it's his mother-in-law. She walks in and uh-oh. Tom tries to panic talk his way out of the obvious, but she's not having it. Just then Sam arrives and they all go out for coffee. Tom has lunch with Mario. He starts to panic because all the women in the cafe look like Lilith. He goes back to the office and... I need you to, uh... Hello. I want to... Ah, uh, that's just the Henderson client. Suddenly, he feels the need to take a half day. Behold the power of horny! The next day, Tom is feeling guilty. Lilith persuades him to take a sick day. The next day at work, Lilith stops in for a visit. She throws Mario out so she can give Tom a nooner. Let the loud sex commence. I think Mario's leaving a little something on the door. Where's this office where you can have loud sex and no one has a problem with it? This is Red Shoe Diaries turf. Tom then explains to Mario how he just can't control himself around her. He goes to visit Alex. She thinks he's having an affair. He explains himself and she believes him. So, he goes home and continues his affair. He tells Lilith Alex is coming home, and this has to end. Yeah, sure. The next day he's supposed to be at work, but he's getting his noggin drilled into the headboard. Alex is home alone and finds underpants everywhere. Tom's worn out, but Lilith is going to get him to go for another round. Alex gets some flowers, but the note attached is the last thing she wanted to see. Lilith is sexy, but she has the worst penmanship. Tom comes home and there are cats everywhere. He discovers Alex is staying with her mother. He goes to the door and it's Paul, a guy who used to work with Stephen, the owner who killed himself. Paul tells Tom Stephen was telling him about a succubus. Just then, Lilith shows up to chase Paul away. And now, more sex. Tom tries to get her to stop, but she's doing it anyway. Tom then goes to explain things to Alex. He promises her it's over, but... Oh, it's not over until Lilith says it's over. Tom goes to the doctor because his testicles are the size of raisins. The doctor is trying to figure out what's wrong with him. What kind of exercise have you been doing? That night, more sex. Only this time it's sex surrounded by cats. Normally a woman with this many cats doesn't look like this. Sam is talking to Alex about Tom. One mistake does not tarnish a man. How about several dozen mistakes? Tom reads Stephen's book about the succubus. He goes to talk to Paul. Paul explains that Bast was the cat god of Egypt. Paul has to go, but he wants to talk to Tom later. Except he gets run over by Lilith. Tom does some more reading and discovers that Sam is really Satan. He was married to a witch named Lilith, who was Adam's first wife. Tom then goes to tell Alex the news. Alex, you won't believe this. Turns out I wasn't cheating on you. I was under the spell of a succubus disguised as a cat that had taken on the persona of Lilith, the- Hello? Hello? He goes to see Alex and explains to her in person. She forgives him. Then he tries to explain things to Mario. 
He's like the real life quagmire. And she's a sucking bus. Man, I don't care what she's sucking. Tom passes out and is having a nightmare. He goes to the local witch busters and gets some supplies to fight off Lilith. He goes home to use the protection spell, but it doesn't work. Great, that's 50 bucks down the drain. Lilith corners him and, of course, wants only one thing. He remembers fire can stop a succubus, so... <laughs> oh, that doesn't look good. The devil laughs because I guess he owns his soul or something. Back at the doctor, he explains Tom had a disease he caught from parasites and cat litter. Parasites attack the nervous system, traveling to the brain, causing dementia and bouts of psychosis. Now that everything's better, the Bennetts move into a new standalone home. It's a while later and they had a baby. Tom hears cat noises and what even is this ending? The movie was filmed in Romania in the early 90s, shortly after the fall of communism. The director, Jeff Rayner, was an American, but since they were filming in Romania, almost no one on the crew spoke English. This made the shoot complicated, but not impossible. The director had a cameo as the flower delivery guy. He's still working, but now is both the director and producer on shows like Surface, The Affair, and High Fidelity. Right before Serpent's Lair, he shot four episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Heather Medway played Alex. She was a model who got her start in a KFC commercial. She moved into acting and had a part in the David A. Pryor movie, Center of the Web. She quickly moved onto a major role in the short-lived Melrose Place spinoff, Models, Inc. The always excellent Jeff Fahey was Tom. While his breakout role was The Lawnmower Man in 1992, he started acting all the way back in 1983 on the soap opera One Life to Live. Working on Serpent Slayer was difficult for him because he was severely allergic to cats. Lisa B. was Lilith. This was her first movie. She only did a few other movies like Almost Heroes and seems to have left the industry. She now is the UK spokesperson for the International Fund for Animal Welfare. Serpent Slayer is sexy, but it's not scary. Lisa B. does a good job with the first part, but when she starts making cat noises... <laughs> it gets corny. Still, it's scary to think. Yeah, this guy who genuinely loves his wife, but is compelled to have sex with Lilith. Of course, no one believes he really doesn't want to do this and can't control it. The poor guy was just trying to choose love, but the succubus wouldn't let him. Well, I guess it's like they say... He didn't want to be horny, he wanted to be happy. Thank you.